Congratulations to all our parents and families. We are so happy to be celebrating together with you on this beautiful night.
gentlemen, please stand and join Marine Recruit and Terre Haute Senior Lance Del Bonus in the Pledge of Allegiance. We ask that you remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by senior members of the Terre Haute Chorus. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic and one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Greetings, Chair Ho families, school committee members, community representatives, faculty and staff, and the class of 2021. It is my great honor to speak to you today and a privilege to have served your, as your principal for your four years at Chair Ho. As you know, we're going out together. Following a year and a half defined by circumstances that challenged our personal and physical well being, forced us to adapt teaching and learning, and frustrated our collective expectations for what school looks and feels like. I hate that your senior experience lacks so many of the events that you anticipated as underclassmen, and that many of the experience we did create were muted in comparison to past years. That said, I see values in the hardships we've endured and the sacrifices we've made in our shared journey. And I'd like to share my perspective on COVID positives and close contacts. COVID positive carries a negative connotation, but I've tried to turn this term on its head to find and affirm the outcomes that leave you and your school stronger for the experience. A great source of frustration for students and adults alike is changes in expectations. Consider your teachers and the expectations surrounding providing instruction to both virtual and in-person learners simultaneously. Know that they have very high expectations for the quality of instruction they deliver, but planning and managing both groups simultaneously represented perhaps their greatest professional challenge. For students, masking, moving around school in one direction, lack of traditional group work, the limits of extracurricular participation in band, chorus, shortened sports seasons, quarantining as close contacts, all of that pushed your personal and collective patience and flexibility. But teachers found a way and students adapted and embraced the limitations, not joyfully, but with a shared sense of purpose. If there's one essential disposition we've exercised and developed this year, it has to be the ability to pivot. That is to adapt to changing guidance, circumstances, instructional modes perceived and real distance from each other without experiencing or at least expressing the frustration in the moment. I know we all carry COVID frustration inside us and I'm sure we all had at least one COVID meltdown this year some of you, perhaps quite a few. No doubt we all discovered a little more patience, perspective and serenity to control what we can and to let go of what we cannot. Know that this will serve you well. As Mr. Ritchie used to say, don't let negative emotion derail action. The pandemic has, charged, has been charged with the language of blame in the news and when COVID exposures undermined experiences people were looking forward to, but I have heard very little of that in our school community. One of my COVID positives this year came during the thousand plus calls I made to parents regarding close contacts. With few exceptions, parents expressed gratitude for our risk mitigation strategies and many of the calls led to conversations that built important relationships between parents and our school. I believe as educators, we have a greater perspective on the challenges students and families face at home and the impact those challenges have on learning because of our shared struggle. This notion that we are responsible for each other's experience, perhaps more so than at any other time in our school lives, was magnified in my own perceptions of our school community this year. I can count on one hand the number of times I personally have asked, had to ask a student or adult to pull their mask over their nose or to follow our travel plan in school. Our athletes and club, me club members have willingly tested as part of our risk mitigation protocols. Our teachers have been diligent in their charting of students and adherence to distancing requirements. Our TAs have adapted their service to support teaching from home and our custodial staff added numerous cleaning protocols to ensure our building is a safe place, all working together in an effort to keep a focus on teaching and learning. I can tell you that while our school experience was more muted than in the past, we are kinder and gentler with each other, more appreciative of the many aspects of schooling 
that we might have taken for granted and more aware of how our attitudes and actions impact others. That increased awareness of who we are in relationship to others, our close contacts, is essential to your next big move. Understanding the perspectives of others has value in an ever-changing world. Your ability to be present in the moment, whether in person or virtually, to be an attentive and responsive listener, and to appreciate attention and communion that perhaps we assumed would always be there, are qualities of character that open doors, create opportunities, and support achievement of your goals, wherever your next big move takes you. I leave you today with a simple mantra that has started my day every day since the first day of school this year. I challenge myself to identify three things that I do not take for granted in that moment. And from there, I start my day with perspective on my good fortune. I don't take for granted that the Cherho School community embraces its own and rallies for each other in times of crisis. I don't take for granted that my experience at Cherho High School and the relationships developed have challenged me to be my best self. I do not take for granted that the promise I see in the eyes of the class of 2021 inspires me to continue to grow as I make my next big move with you. Congratulations. Please welcome Chair Ho School Committee Chair, Linda Lyon. Good evening, Chair Ho Class of 2021. It is with a great deal of pleasure that I bring greetings from the Chair Ho School Committee. As chair of the school committee, I can assure you that the school committee applauded to many accomplishments as you received your Chair Ho diploma. We are all very proud of you. Members of the school committee are present this evening to celebrate this important milestone with you. I am pleased to introduce at this time on the stage, Vice Chair Catherine Juicy and, Dr. and Reverend David Stahl. Also with us this evening, sitting over here, if they would just rise really quickly, is Craig Luzon, Lisa Macaruso, Donna Chambers, Ryan Callahan, Mr. William Day, and Linda McAllister. Thank you. It is also my pleasure to introduce, introduce the following public officials who have taken time from their busy schedule to be with you tonight. Um, today with it, tonight with us, we have State Representative Blake Filippi, Hopkinton Town Council President Stephen Moffat, Hopkin, Hopkinton Town Council Member Sharon Davis, Charlestown Town Council Member Cody Clarkin, and Richmond Town Council Member Lauren Cacciola. A sincere thank you to all of you for being present tonight to honor this class of 2021. Please know that the entire community stands proudly by your side this evening. We celebrate this moment with you by wishing you the very best tonight and every success in the future. We hope you will always find yourselves as happy and full of big crazy dreams as you are today. Thank you for your time and congratulations. Here to address, to address her classmates is salutatorian Faith Ells. All right. Well, I've never spoken in front of this many people, so I'm just gonna have to stumble through this with me. Hello, everyone. Congratulations to my class and to the parents and loved ones that I'm sure are teary-eyed with pride and joy. Thank you to the teachers, staff, administration, and to everyone who made this possible. 
I'm only going to say this once. This year has been hard. Together, we've spent a third of our high school career in a pandemic. We've missed things that we were looking forward to and got to skip events that we were figuring out how to say no to. We've lost loved ones and developed a new way of living. But I'm not going to focus on this because we're all so much more than the corona class. Now, moving on to my real speech. High school sucks. It's the worst. <laughs> too many social rules, too many silly fights with your friends that feel like the end of the world, too many late nights cramming for a test or writing an essay an hour before it's due. I can remember countless nights staying up until 2 a.m. doing assignments for bio, and this mentality ran, right, ran with me right through my senior year. <laughs> As for silly fights, well, even just a couple of weeks ago, my friends and I had a spat over the seating for prom, which many of us won't even remember in years to come. But high school is also the best. Sure, you go through the motions and have pitfalls. You make friends and you lose them. You find yourself, then get confused and have to do it all over again. But you become you through the process. Everyone you met, every class you took, Every decision you made has led you to this moment. I wouldn't say that I had a perfect time at Cherahoe. I've had numerous moments where I couldn't get out of bed and go to school just to worry about what people thought about me, only to come home with my social battery at a whopping zero. But I've also learned what it means to love and fight and care for others. I've learned about hard work and how good it feels when it pays off. I've developed, whoop, <laughs> it's windy. <laughs> um, oh, I've learned about um, how much I love helping people. I've developed a passion to become a teacher, and I think that through our time here, we've all found something like that. We found our passions, whether it be a sport, the theater, science, criminal justice, writing, business, or of course, helping others in any way you can. And that's what I think is so special about our time here. Because no matter what, whether you can't wait to leave or you wish you didn't have to go, you know that Cheraho has made a difference in your life. It's shown you what you want to do and what you never want to be caught doing again. I've been dreading writing this because it means it'll all be over. I know we're all going to go off and do big, amazing, or simple, satisfying things with our lives. But I can't help wishing we had one more homecoming, one more football game, one more early morning in the gym on Spirit Week. Nevertheless, we persist. From here on out, we will all go our separate ways, some reaching out to far places and others staying close to home. We're going to meet new people, try new things, and change our life plan a hundred times over. Go through hardships and experience successes. And the foundation of all these lives ahead of us will be Cheraho. So here's my formal gratitude for the school that is giving me more stress and more happiness than anything else. Thank you, Cheraho. Thank you. <laughs> Not finished yet, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, what can I say? Um, <laughs> as I stand here in front of you all, I want to remind you of one very important piece of information. Intelligence does not define you. In fact, I truly believe that being smart is purely a social construct. Obviously, you should strive for greatness. However, I do not think that you should limit yourself based on your performance in school. School focuses on four primary topics out of millions. There will always be some person who knows one topic better than you, and you will always know some topic better than another. No one person contains more value than another based on their based on their grades. <laughs> you have value no matter what. You can do anything you want to, despite what others tell you. It takes hard work, grit, and determination, but you should not hold how you performed here in high school as your definition of success. So I'm going to leave you with this. Do whatever you can to fight for the life you want. Use what you've learned here at Cheraho whether it be from positive or negative experiences, advocate for yourself and work hard for what you want. I can tell you that in 10th grade, I would not have imagined me standing in there, nor was I even sure that I would make it to graduation. 
but I am and will forever be glad that I fought. Thank you and best of luck with all your successes. Here to introduce the faculty speaker, our seniors, Alexa Kiltaika and Morgan Chattel. As a freshman, you walk down D Hall and you peer into D5 to see a room that is ad Adventure Time themed. You walk by it after your lunch and you notice all of the students are locked down a bit, patiently waiting. You're sitting in whatever business class you have next door and you occasionally hear screaming, clapping, or beep boops at 7 a.m. in the morning. And maybe you were one of the people who had heard the tumble he took off his desk that one time. <laughs> You may wonder who this crazy man is that's running class, and it can sometimes remain a mystery. But for those in Spanish, you'll probably meet this man, and the rest will just hear of the stories and of the screaming. Those fortunate enough to make it into one of his classes will find that he is much more than an eccentric and passionate Spanish teacher. He is one of the most genuine teachers who truly wants what's best for his students. He is the type of personable teacher who genuinely wants to engage in conversation with his students whether it be discussing six things that they did over the weekend during the weekly warm-up or chit-chatting during his snack time, which typically consisted of oranges. During lockdown, he would repeatedly ask us how we were doing, trying to get us to talk about one of the many things that could be bothering us during such a hard time. Not only does he teach us how to conjugate Spanish verbs or the social issues that, spa that face Spain before their civil war, but he ensures to work in class time to teach us about today's social issues and to discuss current events. He educates his students to be concerned about the world going on around them and creates a safe place for them to express their opinions and beliefs. All teachers shape the next American generation. However, they should take a page out of his book for he is shaping the self-aware, confident, and educated leaders of tomorrow. With his upbeat and caring personality, he surely is someone to leave a positive, lasting impression on all that he encounters. He is an amazing role model to all of his students, and I couldn't think of anybody better to deliver a speech to us on our graduation night. And, and with, with that, that being said, we would like to, to give a big hola, 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 hola. <laughs> Senor Pecoraro. You're not supposed to make me cry before my speech. <laughs> hola, 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 hola. To the class of 2021, congratulations on your achievement. It's been four long years filled with the craziest stuff that I have ever seen in my life. And you have experienced it all. We've been through a lot. The last year alone was full of enough major events to fill a lifetime. The fact that you are sitting in front of me today is a testament to your dedication and resilience. This is the class of 2021. The night is yours, and to get off, I have a gift for every one of you. That bag that was sitting on your seat, that is your very own personal graduation final kit from me to you. If you haven't done so already, open up. And can I please have two junior helpers to the stage to assist me in distributing things to faculty? Well, the two junior helpers, come on up. I recognize a lot of people here. Bryn, you're in Spanish 5. Kaylee would have wanted me to talk about pigs, but I'm not going to. Anastasio is one out of all of the Anastasio children that I've had in Spanish class. And she also laughed at me when I fell off my chair. Okay. Could you do me this favor? 
visualize and they need to go back to the faculty in the back. These are the same thing. For the people on the stage, you get for the people in the back, but there's something special here for Mrs. Sauce. Can you make sure she gets it? Your graduation smile gifts contain, contain handmade items that serve a practical purpose and also carry with them a symbolic meaning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These items are about this a magnifying glass, a mirror, and a light. And if you're a boss, it's a light, it's a tiny turtle. The reason for that is Mrs. Boss could not get through one of the announcements about seeing turtles off the road, and I secretly played that turtle dropped into her office in the course of three weeks. So, it was me. <laughs> okay, so these items take back to our office, magnifying glass, a mirror, and a light. Teachers and staff and people on stage, you're getting the last part of the survival kit, the light, which we will say towards the end of the speech. If you want to get all the help now, go right ahead. Or put on your sticker, so it's 2021. I'm going to ask you to please not use the remaining items until I ask you to. Think of it as a test of impulse control. All right, let's take this off. The first item in your survival kit that I'd like to talk about is your focus. The compass can be used for survival. It can assist you in finding your way when used with maps and landmarks. Compasses represent motivation and inspiration. As a symbol, the compass signifies bringing motivation to a person feeling lost. And the compass can also represent never forgetting your roots and always being able to find your way back, especially for young people about to move on to the next chapter of their lives. Your compass is marked in the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. The Native American meaning of cardinal directions is based on wisdom, religion, tradition, and ritual. All these traditions are connected with nature. Take out your compass. Hold it in your palm. Notice how the face moves when you move it back and forth. What happens if you took it on its side, and how it works perfectly when you are still and the compass is completely level. When you look at your compass, I want you to remember where your journey started. When it comes time to choose which direction to follow, I want you to pause, maintain balance, and make your decisions wisely. Next, I want you to pick up your magnifying glass. Notice how it makes objects appear larger, allowing you to see details. For survival purposes, you can use a magnifying glass to start a fire. Symbolically, magnifying glasses point out our most crippling fears and our most restrictive attitudes, prejudices, and misconceptions that are holding up our progress. Things we must really face up to and overcome if we are to grow. This is why I included the magnifying glass. Your generation will be the best educated that society has ever known. You are critical thinkers. You will not be easily tricked or misled to believe things that you know that are not true. You are keenly aware of misinformation in the media. You have the tools and resources to see fact from fiction. You are willing to do the work to verify facts and make decisions based on facts and not emotions. Reflecting on my own education, when I was about 16 and 17, I had a vague understanding of concepts like segregation, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and the American Civil Rights Movement. But much of that information was not presented in context to what was happening at that point in history, what came before, and how that shapes the present. Last year, I was shocked when I learned about the Tulsa massacre of 1921, which I only learned after the death of George Floyd. And there were countless other historical events and connections that I simply wasn't aware of. I was never presented with crucial information about black history in high school college, or even grad school. I felt that my education didn't prepare me for the future, and I entered adulthood without a firm understanding of our own nation's history and how that affected the world that we live in. I also learned very little about Native American history, and what I did learn had been stripped of historical fact and cultural value. 
For too long, the truth of Native American history and indigenous stories have been ignored. Their voices and experiences are valid, and we need to do the work starting here and now to make their voices heard. Your generation knows that we have that we learn history to understand current reality. Your generation has learned the hard, hard history, the troubling facts, the truth. Your education has allowed you to face your own prejudices and misconceptions. Your education has given you the gift of objective reasoning. So I ask you to use your magnifying glass together to face our most crippling fears, our most restrictive attitudes, prejudices, and misconceptions to remind you to focus, study details, and maybe, just maybe, start your own fires. Now I want you to take a look at your mirror. For survival purposes, they can be used to signal other people by reflecting light and to signal airplanes. Here's why I included a mirror in your survival kit. To see yourself. To be in introspective. To see your strength to recognize your worth and acknowledge trauma so that you can heal. Trauma can be passed from generation to generation. And we know that people who are experiencing trauma that are hurting tend to hurt others. We all have experienced trauma. I ask you to recognize what makes you hurt, to take steps towards healing and to support each other to work through that process. Look into your mirror. When you look in your mirror, I want you to reflect on what you've experienced. When you look in your mirror, I want you to acknowledge your trauma. I want you to see your strength. I want you to recognize your worth. I want you to know that you are unique, you are strong, and your value to society is greater than you realize. Use your mirror to know yourself, acknowledge your needs, and identify the motivations of your behavior and actions. This will help in how you see others. The final component of your survival kit is a light. In a basic survival sense, that light can be used to signal others in darkness. Go ahead and pull the insulator tab out of the bottom of the light to activate it. You can always put the tab back to save it for later. Native American myth and lore is rich with fire and light symbolism. Fire represents living things, the creation of light and the sun. Creation stories often include fire and flame as creative and destructive forces. The Aztecs recognize fire and light as a fundamental catalyst of change. If you haven't done so already, open the palm of your hand and hold your light. Turn your light on so that it shines. Some will twinkle with a rainbow of colors. Some will shine with a steady white light. Here's why I gave you this light. Your light appears as unique in this world as you do. Your light can illuminate the darkness. It can guide you to safety. It can help others find you when you're lost. The purest form of energy is light. Light and fire carry the same symbolism. It can create and destroy. It is the fundamental catalyst of change. When you look at this light, I want you to recognize the light that is within you the light that is within all of us. Your light cannot be taken away, snuffed out, or destroyed. As such, the actions that you take on this earth will, will always be felt. You will not be forgotten. You will not fade into darkness. Your light is your own individual power, but this power can be magnified. Hold up your light. Hold it close to a person's light near you. Notice how, together, the light is brighter, is stronger, and defeats darkness. Let this remind you of your own individual power. Let this remind you that you are the fundamental catalyst of change in the world, but you are immensely stronger and have a greater impact when you join forces with others. The world needs you to be a fundamental catalyst of change. The world needs you to work to reverse climate change. The world needs you to enact changes to protect society as a whole from mass shootings and violence. The world needs you to fight racial inequality, economic inequality, and social injustice. 
the world needs you to work together for a more peaceful society. The world needs you to help end hunger. The world needs you to make sure that food, shelter, and health are a fund fundamental right for all people. The world needs you to vote to elect leaders that will work for the benefit of all people. The world needs you to run for elected offices, for school committees, town governments, House of Representatives, the Senate, even the presidency to truly bring change that'll benefit, benefit us all. The world needs you to be of service to others, to be police officers, social workers, firefighters, teachers, doctors, nurses, home health aides, and anyone else who dedicates their life to be in service to others. Use your light to be the fundamental catalyst of change. Thank you, class of 2021. Now, valedictorian Paige Grissom will address her classmates. teachers, friends, and most importantly, the class of 2021, thank you for being a part of our graduation ceremony. I can't believe we're actually here, and I mean that in both the traditional, wow, 13 years sure went by fast sort of way, as well as in the literal sense. This is a very unorthodox end to our high school years. I would like to take a moment to thank all the teachers, administrators, and staff who helped us along the way, and who put in so much extra time and effort this last year to ensure students were able to continue to learn either virtually or in person, in spite of challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. This year brought out the best in a lot of people, and I have a lot of respect for the teachers and staff who prioritized their students and chose to do the right thing rather than taking advantage of a bad situation. We are grateful for everything. I'd also like to take a moment to thank all the families and friends out in the audience. Your support allowed us to grow into the people we are today and was instrumental to everything we have been able to accomplish. I'm going to use this opportunity to specifically thank my own family, especially my mom and dad, partially because they're incredible people who support me no matter what and help me get to where I am today, and also partially because if I didn't give them a specific shout out in this speech, they'd probably be pretty irritated with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm naturally a very quiet person, and I struggled a lot with interpersonal relationships, especially when I was younger, so I know that without my family, I would never have been able to stand up on this stage and talk to you all. So thanks, mom and dad, for everything. Throughout my years as a Terre Haute student, I've noticed a recurring theme in many of my classes. Students struggle to grasp why they have to learn certain things like the quadratic, quadratic formula and mitosis. They ask, how will this ever help me in real life? Why do I need to know this? Even though I'm not yet an adult, so I have very little authority in this matter, I'm going to say that it is extremely unlikely that the vast majority of our class will really need to know these things to get by in life. Therefore, I've come to the conclusion that the most important aspect of education isn't memorizing facts, it's learning how to think. Things like mathematics, science, and literature do help us to understand the world around us and thus have immense value, at least in my opinion. But if there's one thing I hope you've all learned during our years at Cheraho, it's how to take in information from the environment, analyze it, and come to your own conclusions rather than simply taking other people's beliefs at face value. Over the last year, we've increasingly seen people tell, try to tell us how to live our lives because they believe they know what is best for us. Government regulations to control the COVID-19 pandemic were put in place, even though the data clearly shows that many of these restrictions were unnecessary, damaging, and could have been lifted. Many people looked at the new regulations and automatically trusted in their power to keep us safe. After all, Big Brother is watching, and who doesn't trust their Big Brother? But just as Orwell, George Orwell described 70-some-odd years ago, Big Brother is not your friend. I urge all of you to always look at the data and come to your own conclusions. Use common sense and personal discretion to make choices that are correct for you and your family, family rather than blindly allowing others to tell you what is good for you and decide how you should live your life. We are all unique individuals who come from different circumstances and have different minds. So rather than believing the narrative presented to you, look beneath the surface and come to your own understanding of the world and its complexities. There will never be a day where everyone agrees, but diversity and discussion of thought will allow humanity to progress further in our pursuit of truth. 
Only when you can you think when you can think for yourself can you truly be successful and free. Class of 2021, this is the first time we've all been together since March 13th, 2020, and the last time we will be together as a class. After today, we must all go our separate ways. Some of us are choosing to continue our education. Others will serve our country or go directly into the workforce, and some go on to release their own child through life. As we enter the cheesiest, but hopefully at least somewhat inspirational part of this speech, all I can say is that no matter what you choose to do with your life, I hope you all work hard and try to make something of yourselves. We're starting with a clean slate, and it is up to you to decide your future. At the end of middle school, I chose to open a speech using a quote from Albus Dumbledore, so it only seems fitting that I close this speech using that same quote. It is our choices that show who we truly are for my, far more than our abilities. Thank you. Please welcome Terre Haute Superintendent Tina Picard. Good evening and welcome to the Terre Haute class of 2021 high school graduation. Today we are all here to celebrate this important rite of passage. Your graduation from high school does not represent an ending. It acknowledges the next chapter of your life as you work towards your next goal, whether that be heading off to college, the military, or your chosen career. Join me this evening to celebrate your achievements. Joining me this evening to celebrate your achievements are your teachers, staff, school and district administrators, including Assistant Superintendent Jane Daly, Principal Craig McKenzie, Assistant Principal Andrea Spaz, Director Jerry Orr, Director Brian Tatro, and your class guest speaker, John Pecoraro, Richmond. I am joined by school committee chair Linda Lyle, along with members of our school committee and town councils and the state of Rhode Island. I also want to acknowledge and recognize the deans of students, Ryan Bridgham and Carrie Ewing Chow. <laughs> chorus director Lynn Dowdy and our chorus for their performances this evening. I would also like to express a special thank you to Principal McKenzie who is leaving us to assume the position of principal in Kashmir, Washington. His time in Charaho a total of nine years has been marked by a commitment of excellence, high standards, service, and strong student advocacy. On behalf of the entire school community, please join me in wishing him the very best as he moves on from the herd. into the military. They have been identified through red, white, and blue honor cords this evening. The cords represent valor, strength, innocence, purity, and perseverance. In the years ahead, they will be asked to travel a long way from home, to be away from loved ones for long stretches of time, and face dangers some of us will never know. I want you to know how proud we are of your decision and how grateful we are that all, of all that you will do. Please join me in wishing the following students safe travels as they embark on this courageous path. Joseph Silver, who will be heading to the National Guard. <laughs> Nicholas McCarthy, who will be joining the Coast Guard. <laughs> Lance Stillbonis, who led this evening's Pledge of Allegiance, who will be joining the Marines. <laughs> that we have 76% of our students headed into a post-secondary institution and many others directly moving into their chosen careers. Class of 2021, as you sit here tonight, anxiously awaiting your diploma, I am the only one before you and the diplomas, so I'll make it good. I want you to think about your friends and family that are here with you tonight and who are watching the live stream. I'm sure they are also thinking about all the memories that have, they have shared with you. They are thinking about your story. You are all the main characters in the story of you. Ask yourself, how's your story so far? 
First, I would like to tell you a story about an elderly gentleman who was a carpenter and he was ready to retire. He told his boss that he was planning to leave so he could live a more leisurely life. He wanted to enjoy more time with his spouse, his children, and his grandchildren. He explained he would miss the paycheck, but it was time for him to say goodbye. His boss was sad to see him go, sad that he was retiring, and asked if he could build just one more house as a personal favor. The man agreed, but his heart wasn't into it. His workmanship was poor, and he didn't make sure he used the best materials. It really was an unfortunate way for him to end his career. When he finished the job, his boss came by to inspect the house and proceeded to hand him the key. He told him, this is for you. This is your house. It's my gift to you. He was shocked. What a shame. If he had only known he was building his own house, he would have done it so differently. We build our stories every day, one day at a time, sometimes putting less than our best in, into it, less than our best effort into it. Then it's with complete shock when we realize we have to live with the stories we have written. If we could go back and do it over, many of us would want to revise. We would love that opportunity, but you can't go back. You are the carpenter. You are the writer of your story. You take the pen every day, and one word at a time, one day at a time, your story is written. Life is your story. Choose the right words. Pick the best characters. Be the change you want to see in the world. Your stories have only just begun. Choose your words carefully. The choices you make today will all be a part of your story. Will you be kind? Will you stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves? Will you brighten someone's day? And will you write a story that takes advantage of every and all opportunities that you have been provided? No one else can write the story for you. You will now begin a new journey and you will add to it. You will have obstacles, you will have successes, and hopefully a lot of joy. Make good choices. Being a charger is a part of your story. Once a charger, always a charger. Your lives are before you. Your past is behind you. Your memories are forever within. It is time to move forward as your next journey begins with your next step. Now head off into the world, take your pen, and continue to write a great story. On behalf of the Charahoe Regional School District, we want to wish all of you, the Charahoe Class of 2021, good luck as you embark on the next part of your journey. Congratulations. Members of the Terre Haute Regional School Committee, it is my duty and my honor to certify that these students have met all of the requirements for graduation as set forth by the state of Rhode Island. I present to you all here this evening, the class of 2021. Anderson. Michaela Riley Anderson. Ayla! Ayla 
Rose Ingrisani. <laughs> Shane Thomas Ayers. <laughs> Michaela Catherine Hazanaro. <laughs> Jasmine Renee Babbitt. <laughs> Elizabeth Baker. <laughs> Natanis Anaquis Baker. <laughs> Nathan William Barrett. <laughs> Jonah Nathaniel Beasley. <laughs> Jackson Russell Bodro. <laughs> Hannah Lynn Benavides. <laughs> Patrick Bentley. Yeah, Ian Gregory Bento. Woo! Nathan Edward Berry. Woo! Cameron Joseph Blanchard. Christopher Edward Livin. Jarrett Thomas Beauclair. Leah Me Bouchard. Woo! Michaela Marie Brady. Woo! Libby May Braun. Woo! Jackson Kane Bridge. Lorcan Gabriel Briggs. London Alexander Bromel. Olivia Grace Brown. Aaliyah Grace Banal. Allison Michelle Banal. Stephen Michael Burr. Megan Ann Butler. <laughs> Natalie Victoria Byers. <laughs> Molly Amanda Calabro. <laughs> Cordelia Eleanor Halberson. <laughs> Emma Quinn Calhoun. <laughs> Carolyn Brigida Castillo. <laughs> Madison Ann Shalifo. <laughs> Delia V. Champagne. <laughs> Morgan Paige Chattel. <laughs> Serena Francisca Cicerillo. <laughs> Ryan Ellerly Clark. Caitlin Patricia. Clavin. Rachel Ingrid Jean Clements. Yay, Abigail Josephine Cole. Yay. Ethan Michael Cole. Yay. Caleb Lee Collins. Yay. Holly Constable. Kylie Elizabeth Cook. Nicholas Albert Carrente. Hannah Jane Costa. Emmett Dylan Cummins. Sullivan James Cummins. Deambra. <laughs> Jessica Marie Daniels. Austin Donald DeAngelis. Jack Cash DeAngelis. Paul Raymond DiCataldo. Thomas Delbonis. 
Sydney Lydia Denencore. Jason William Desrosiers. Hannah Faith Diaz. Ava Sephora DiBiasio. Daria Lauren DiBiasio. Megan Grace Dickerman. Isaiah James Diorio. Jack Joseph Domingos. James Patrick Doherty. Eleanor Grace Douglas. Matthew Renninger Dowling. Duffin Jr. Jada Alexis Smith. Jason Robert Edwards. Faith Elizabeth McLeod Ells. Colby James Lettera Elwell. Sean Carlton Ennis. Paul Jacob Erdos. Dominic Michael Fabricator. Amanda Elizabeth Fadgen. Ryan Philip Filardo. Carlo Lee Farmer. Emily Rose Feast Hamill. Sarah Yvonne Felicetti. Grace Lorena Felkner. Jonathan J. S. Fernberg. Bryn Nicole Ferraro. Emily Ann Fish. Cassandra Elizabeth Fisher. Cassandra Isabella Fitz. Christian Clayton Fortune. Sarah Lynn Frost. Samantha Lynn Fougere. Yeah. Kyle Edward Gardner. Yeah. Jillian Tessa Gear. Yeah. Justin Briggs Giles. Yeah. Dwight A. Gillis. Yeah. Andrew Dominic Juicy. <laughs> Aiden Joseph Golden. <laughs> Liam Matthew Goldstein. <laughs> Sean Paul Goulet. <laughs> Kelly E. Green. <laughs> Paige Elizabeth Grissom. Alexis Nicole Haggerty. Logan Riley Hall. Jessica Ann Harney. Andrew Kennedy Haynes. Maya Grace. Healy. <laughs> Stephanie Marie Hewins. <laughs> Patrick Henry Holder. <laughs> Krista Shauna Holland. <laughs> Emma Diane Hughes. <laughs> Daniel Scott. Husky Jr. 
Elizabeth Marie Johnson. Samuel Lewis Johnston. Victoria Jones. Nicholas William Joss. Aiden Nicholas Kelly. Alexa Jordan Kiltaika. Let it go, Nikki. Julia Ann Kissinger. Leanna Kissinger. Sophia Grace Clavo. Ella Marilyn Krause. In memoriam, Owen W. Kruger. Josephine Helen Lakis. <laughs> Braden Robert LaJoy. <laughs> Emma Ray LaValley. <laughs> Madison Cage Lying. <laughs> Abigail Elizabeth Lefkowitz. Abby Amanda Lewis. Jack Thomas Loizo. William Scott Lovewell. Nadia Marie Lewis. Sarah N. Maine. Melanie Catherine Maloney. Madeline Rose Mania. Liam Matthew Manny. Jamie Elizabeth Marchetti. Michaela Jean Maroney. Aria Quinn Martin. Zachary Stark Martinez. Casey Ray Mastin. Bryn Michaela McCarthy. Nicholas James McCarthy. Keely Rose McHugh. Logan Patrick McHugh. Cameron Bryce Messier. Lily Ann Murrow. Sean M. Morgan. Taylor Kathleen Morgan. Isabella Skyler Murray. Thomas John Murray. Zachary Thomas Nadu. Michaela Marie Newhouse. Emily Paige Norberg. Lindsay Don O'Leary.
Rachel Dawn O'Leary. Cameron Grace Oaf. Damon Anthony O'Rourke. Mason James Payne. Joshua Alexander Pater. Alexis Kate Paul. Brianna Renee Payne. Orla Josephine Peck. James Robert Penhollow. Sean Irving Perrin. Laurel Ann Pilkington. Jaden Michelle Plouf. Andrew Bertrand Poirier. Faith Pratt. Madeline Ann Preston. Jared Ansel Pride. Isaac Xavier Frucha. Tyler Joseph Puglia. Kevin Jean Quinn Jr. Kristen Lynn Rakowski. Jaden Isaac Rios. <laughs> Sophia Lindsay Roman. <laughs> Jillian Elizabeth Rude. <laughs> Shelby Elizabeth Rude. <laughs> Olivia Marie Rosa. Tucker Hill Ross. Sabrina Marie Rubenstein. Kana Calervo Salia. Cosette Joy Salon. Ethan James Sargent. Yeah. Cyrus Elijah Seely. Yeah. Leah Veronica Serum. Yeah. Madison Olivia Seeger. Yeah. Adam Andrew Sherman. Spencer Elizabeth Shields. Joseph Richard Silva. Ilya Grace Jean Simus. Aniana Marie Simone. Cassandra Jane Simpson. Brett Mackenzie Smith. Victoria Kathleen Smith. Samantha Elizabeth Snyder. Catherine Elizabeth Spicanardi. Cadence Jean Spurley. Emily Sarah St. Lawrence. Madeline Elizabeth St. Peter. 
Lexia Taylor Stahl. Abigail Rose Standyman. Frederick Arthur Stanley. Alexia Lynn Stedman. Paige Rebecca Swenson. Adam Fred Tarasuk. Giovanni Domenico Tajin. Cameron Walter Tat. Catherine Elizabeth Rose Thayer. Evan Avery Torje. Lexi Ray Trend. Hallie May Tucker. Haley. Sorry, Haley. Ryan Joseph Tuello. Nathan Edward Yer. Tyler Jackson Wallace. Thomas John Ward. Finn Raymond Whedon. Jennifer Elizabeth Wan, Lucy Rose Willett, Jesse Ann Williams, Rihanna Elizabeth Wills. Kaden Davis Wilson. <laughs> Kaylin Marie Wood. <laughs> Julian Elizabeth Wood. <laughs> Rogan Lee Witherspoon. <laughs> and Cole Joseph Young. <laughs> Please join me in congratulating the class of 2021.
class of 2021, please stand. By the powers invested in me by the Cherho Regional School District, I am proud to graduate this class of 2021. Congratulations. <laughs> On behalf, on behalf of the entire Cherho School District, I would like to thank you for being a part of this celebration. At this time, Ms. Picard and Ms. Daly will re lead the recessional march. Faculty, please line the aisle to welcome the graduates out towards the end of the track area. Families, please hold your places until the last graduate has cleared the faculty.